very good afternoon. Uh, basically, um, there are so many uh, reservations or apprehension to do an iris claw procedure. I have been recently talking to one of my colleagues, and then I realized there is so much of uh, apprehension to be, uh, because owing to all these reasons. So now here I'm presenting my journey in iris claw for the past 10 years, what I have learned from my mistakes, and what I have learned from others' mistakes, and what I have learned while teaching. And at this point, I, I would like to thank the AIOS and the APOS for giving me this opportunity. So now, first question comes, what extra workup is needed? Basically, nothing extra is needed. Do a routine workup, whatever you do for a uh, routine cataract surgery, with a slight importance to various parameters, like what is the pupil size, what, where is the si site of the PI, and assessment of the sulcus, either clinically. Clinically, if sulcus is present, well and good, place an uh, sulcus IOL. If you are not able to uh, determine the integrity of the sulcus, clinically, you can use uh, UVM for the determination of the sulcus. And indirect ophthalmoscopy is a must to detect any presence of any peripheral retinal degeneration, if so present, barrage them. The next question apprehension is, do we really need a VR setup? No. What a routine uh, anterior vitrectomy, what we use in the management of a PCR is enough. And I I, again, I'm stressing, doing an iris claw without a good vitrectomy, I will say it is a crime. Because if your vitrectomy is not proper, you will land up in complications, which I will again highlight in the uh, next slide. Now, which case should I select? Very simple. Any case of an aphakia with a good iris sup uh, tissue support and in the absence of a uh, integrated, I mean, good sulcus. The pupil size, even if you have a larger pupil like this, that, that much of iris is again sufficient to have a, uh, to place an iris claw I will. I divide the indications as a planned or an unplanned procedure. The planned indications are various subluxated uh, lenses or a subluxated IOLs where these can be explanted and you can place an uh, iris claw. And as a ref uh, aphakic rehabilitation uh, procedure where there is no adequate sulcus. Uh, unplanned indications where you have a large PCR or a large zonular dialysis where you cannot face, uh, place in a sulcus or a bag eye oil. Now, what instruments do I need? No need of any extra instruments. Instruments. Basically, I use a shepherd's forceps where you have a good stability. If you don't have a sh uh, shepherd's forceps, even the work can be done with the uh, help of a McPherson's forceps or an intraocular retinal forceps. To enclave the iris tissue, uh, it's better to use a reverse Sinsky or a rod uh, so that it is less traumatic to the iris. In their absence, you can still go ahead with a Sinsky hook. Now, is the def uh, technique so difficult? Absolutely no. It is a very simple technique with a very minimal learning curve. Now, coming to the procedure, I would, uh, you can, I mean, ma majority of the times I do it as a uh, secondary procedure or sometimes I, uh, my, with my, he with the, uh, my help of my colleague, I do the, uh, as a combined procedure. My first step is always a side port, especially in a vitrectomized eye, better to do the side ports first. And the incision can be either temporal or uh, uh, superior. The incision can be either corneal or, or scleral. I always prepare, uh, prefer a superior corneal uh, incision just to save the conjunctiva for the, if at all, you need any future trabs. And also, if in a scleral section, the AC might be collapsing. The AC stability is more better in a uh, corneal incision. Once the eye oil is placed through the side port with the reverse Sinsky, you can, uh, the iris can be tucked. And note the movement of the, uh, direction of how the reverse Sinsky or a rod can be used. And it should be like when you are tucking, it should be only one direction, one vertical down and come out. You should not have a up and down movement. And if you actually see here, when I do my side port first, before the uh, main entry, the AC is more stable. Now in the first video, first the main port was done and then now I'm trying to do a side port and see how the eyeball collapses. This is my first, uh, this was a video which I have recorded 10 years back, and this was my first uh, mistake which I have learned. And from then, I always do my 
side ports first. In cases of coloboma or a small eyes, the a claw can be easy, easily put owing to its smaller size. And now the thing is, what complications should I deal with? When things are done in the right way, the complications are less likely to happen. That's my 10 years post-op pictures where the results are absolutely fantastic. But definitely, it is not without any complications. We can have an ovalization of the pupil. I don't call this as a complication, but uh, it is something like probably the patient might be cosmetically not very happy, but no disturbance to the vision. There can be pigment dispersions that are likely to happen, which can have an impact on the vision. But this can be easily dealt by using a topical steroid. If the topical steroids are not helpful, I use the YAG laser to uh, disturb the pigments. The site of enclavation, they can be uh, iris atrophy, which can lead to loss of enclavation. If there is only one site, if it has lost the enclavation, the anterior segment surgeon itself, they can just prolapse it into the AC, the other, uh, whichever is lost in enclavation, and can be refixed. If it has totally dropped down, yes, my friends are definitely, the, my retinal friends are definitely here to help me out. If the things are not done in the right way, we can land up in situations like this. But again, no need to uh, apprehend. These can be again disenclaved and again re-enclaved also. Yes, disenclavation of the iris, uh, iris claw is definitely tricky, but not an impossible task. The another one thing, the most important thing, is the site of the PI. As the name suggests, peripheral iridectomy, it should be done. It is, has to be done in the periphery. Now, in this case, there is a mid-peripheral iridectomy. So when I dilated the patient, the uh, optic edge got uh, captured and it landed up in a pupillary block glaucoma. Because I'm handling the uveal tissue, one can anticipate the uh, presence of a CME. Now, theoretically, yes, but practically, it is like very uh, less chances of having. Even if you develop, probably- Dr. Madhuri, if you can just finish yeah, your- just two minutes. I mean, it's almost done. Uh, there is a chance, but it can be because, not because of the claw I will as such, but it might be because of the because we have handled like two, three times surgery, that also can be a reason for uh, si um, CME, and it can be dealt in the usual way. Because of the gross pseudophacodonosis, I'm sorry, the video is not working. The, because of the pseudophacodonosis, that actually induces a PVD, which can be a risk factor to, uh, for the development of an RD. This where actually the SFL scores over an iris claw. If you do a proper vitrectomy, the uh, uh, vitreous is not in contact with the uh, optic. So there are less chances of having a PVD induction. So uh, by doing in a proper methodological way, a good workup, things can be right, and you will have better uh, achievements. Happy clawing. Thank you.